Good morning, folks. Over the last day, we saw a slew of earthquake factors combine as a devastating earthquake strikes. A CME is likely heading in Earth's direction. Mainstream scientists turn an eye to the cold aspect of climate change and the road to recognition that our star is an electromagnetic powerhouse above all else. Just got an HOV lane. Let's get to it. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we're focused on only one feature. Multiple filaments snapped just south of the equator center disk. A hushed calm came over our star before the eruption began, and while the main bulk of the CME should miss Earth, a glancing blow here is probable. Minor to moderate geomagnetic storms are as bad as it should get, however. As for solar flaring, the Earth-facing quiet wasn't about to lose on two fronts in one day. Quiet star there, decaying sunspots with much less magnetic danger this morning as the groups are now split magnetically. New ones coming in on the north now. Something interesting, and we've mentioned it a few times on Fly on the Wall, there's one type of planetary geometry that's not alignment-based, and it involves a torque-based look at the center of gravity of the system, and at the same time, when Earth is open to the galaxy. In other words, the bulk mass of the planets reside on one side of the Sun, pulling the whole system maybe inches to feet in one direction, with Earth standing at the edge of the congregation, staring out into darkness. Hadn't happened in half a decade, but now it should happen once a year through 2025. But there's more. Dr. Uyen's number one quake factor is a peak in sunspot number. There. Quake to hit within three days. The dark coronal holes were on the Earth-facing fourth of our star, and that CME released at the exact time as the lithosphere began to shake in Taiwan. The timing is no coincidence. We've seen that instantaneous longitudinal coupling on multiple occasions. At least eight people have died as this shallow quake dropped buildings and trapped citizens. As day broke in this extremely populated area, they were still digging. Let's be watchful for either another one or tropical development by Sunday night. Let's finish off space weather with the solar winds steadying out above average speed. I wouldn't say all is calm, but Earth is handling this just fine. Hopefully you remember this from about a week ago. Solar activity we see is mostly driven by magnetism and electricity, a blow to conventional heliophysics, and salt in the wound comes overnight as a new paper describes exactly the magnetic helicity, the magnetic vortex system, that is answering almost every unanswered question about the observable physics of our star. Next. All models suggest climate change screws with pollinators, but observations tell us that the insects adapt to the timing, but when that frost kicks in, the plants are just not ready. Touche, New Hampshire. I mentioned a tropical development earlier. It won't be a hurricane, but a low will likely swing up the U.S. coastline this weekend, delivering another round of major rain there. But it's more than that. Models suggest we could see a double low system there that simultaneously drops into the Midwest and Northeast, delivering a major cold wave. Seems the cold followed me to Phoenix and left the east hot for the last week. But now that we're back in Pittsburgh, the cold feels welcome in once more. Someone get me a restraining order on that frosty Jezebel. Shot in the dark here. If anyone knows how to work with the publicly released portion of the Watson supercomputer system, including how to train it and deal with its cognitive computing, we've got reason to chat. Shoot me an email if you can. We're going to run through our pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.